Andrew, uh, what a day. Thank you for making time to be here tonight. You're welcome. Um, did it make your um, hair stand up the wrong way or did it irk you otherwise when I said that this is likely to be boring? I believe that this, these charges, the, what, we, what we expect them to be, um, and what we have seen of other charges, even brought against Donald Trump um, in Manhattan Criminal Court, uh, I feel like we ought to let people know that this might be something that is sort of like watching paint dry, that this might be a little boring. As a prosecutor who's bought plenty, plenty of white collar cases, uh, does that bother you? Did I offend you? Well, you certainly didn't offend me, <laughs> Rachel. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think there, there are a couple points. One, no matter how much one anticipates a day like this, uh, when it actually happens, there's, I think, for anybody, there's a certain amount that it sinks in uh, what this means. I totally agree with you that a former president is not immune and can be subject to charges, but it is the case that this has never happened before. But to your point about this now being boring, I think this goes to something you were saying. It's sort of the flip side of that we shouldn't be thinking of a foreign president differently. And because of that, the boring aspect that is about to happen, which is this enormous time delay between an indictment and a trial, is actually part of the rule of law. So for all of those people who've been waiting anxiously to see the former president held to account criminally for his conduct, part of that means that you have to be patient because the rule of law that brought us to today requires that any defendant, no matter whether you like them or don't like them, is entitled to time to prepare, to get the, def the evidence from the government, to uh, think about what kind of defense they want to mount, to make motions challenging the charges. Um, all of that is part of the rule of law, and it, you know, that's people are entitled to that no matter if it's a small crime, whether it's John Gotti, Everyone is entitled to that process, and it's a long process. Just take one data point. The Trump organization that you referred to, it took 16 months to that, for that to go from indictment to trial. So it is a long process, but that process is what it means to be part of the American criminal justice system. And I think from the point of view of your perspective, having been a prosecutor, having been inside that process, presenting that as time to prepare, time to properly litigate the motions and things about the venue and jurisdiction and, you know, what evidence is invisible and all those things, that all completely makes sense. I will also say, just as an observer, it seems to me that it's not in the letter of the law, but a part of the spirit of due process is also that the law be administered in a way that is dispassionate. Um, that is not in a hurry, that is not unduly delayed, but that is also not something that is meted out in the heat of the moment um, or carried along in terms of public sentiment and a sense of, um, a sense of drama. And the delay that you're talking about that we saw in the Trump Organization trial, which is proper, the delay that you can expect in most trials that are like this, because that's what it takes to do it properly, also has the effect, I think, for everybody who's watching that in that trial, how, however closely they're watching it, for whatever reasons, whatever strong feelings they have for or against the defendant or the prosecution, um, that time, time is sort of a cooling saucer here um, in, in terms of making sure that people aren't dragging their emotions into this. And I, I feel, I mean, the reason, the reason I'm highlighting that I think this is going to be boring is because I think that's good news for the country, that this isn't something that things are going to, that we're not going to decide this on a run. This is now going to be something that's going to be done dispassionately, coldly, and by the book. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the argument is, you know, this is from the, the sort of Trump team is that this is selective prosecution, that Alan Bragg acted politically. And it's really important to see that he is treated like everyone else. Remember, this is a DA who initially said no to the charges. They're not ready. Um, that's a sign of uh, certainly not having selective prosecution that he thought he that we're not going to bring a case until it's absolutely ready and we're treating him just like we would anyone else, as you mentioned, with charges that are routinely brought in New York. So you're not treating a former president 
and, you know, with sort of more weight uh, than anyone else or less weight, just like everyone else. And that means that this process is going to be one where there isn't a sort of show trial or a kangaroo court, where it's really important for Americans to see and for the world to see that the rule of law here can work in a way that I think for many people, including myself, we, I think many people were giving up hope that there would be accountability. And then that process plays out. And if Donald Trump can, can uh, win in the sense that the government has not proved its case beyond a reasonable doubt to a unanimous jury, that is the way the system is supposed to work. That is the rule of law at play. And we have to have faith in the same system that led to today in watching this go forward.